we don't know anything about the intent. Obviously, it's a multi-authored paper. There may not even, you know, to the extent that there are flaws here, they may owe to one person's contribution or another. But the point is the, the weird structuring, right, where fluvoxamine gets an over-allocation of people, if one were going to engineer a trial to reach an artificially um, negative conclusion for a drug like ivermectin, one way to do it is to, if the trial is unblinded, is to shunt people into another arm, right? In other words, if you see people who are uh, disproportionately uh, likely to survive or to not need hospitalization and they show up in another arm, then the point is, uh, you know, a, a, a knowing experimenter can rig a trial in this way. I'm not saying anybody rigged this trial, but the point is the more anomalies like this you have that allow somebody to um, engineer a desired result, uh, the more we have to ask the question if that's what happened. And unfortunately, in this environment, we all know that there was tremendous pressure, right? Those of us who talked about ivermectin got tremendous pressure. Uh, blowback for even mentioning the possibility that it worked. And so what we have is an incentive to find that result. And we have anomalies in this trial that would allow a uh, an engineering of that result that are otherwise difficult to explain. Like, why would you over allocate uh, patients to the fluvoxamine arm? So two, two points here. First of all, you're making a great segue to something that um, was said in the in a recent uh, presentation of the results by the authors. Um, I don't remember the, the the person's name. It's Frank something. He says, you know, there is a real question whether we we cut this trial too short in light of the political pressure to show that ivermectin did not work. He, so this is not you saying that. This is them saying that, right? And that they cut it short. But in light of the fact that they didn't cut fluvoxamine short, in fact, they let it. Well, no, I should say that they stopped it at exactly the prescribed time and they didn't, you know, add a few more patients. In fact, Mills, the, the principal investigator uh, in his email to Steve Kirsch said, um, I actually think the result is positive and it shows a 17 percent reduction in hospitalization. And uh, if we had only randomized a few more patients, um, I, I believe that it would have come out significant. So uh, this is literally his quote. So, this is uh, this is stunning. The principal investigator on this trial, this trial which has been heralded from the rooftops as suggesting that this drug has no effect, the principal investigator believes that the trial showed that it was not effective because they didn't have enough patients, that, the, that they, he believes they saw an effect. Yep. Right. And that if they had randomized more patients, that that effect would have been such that the conclusion would have been different. That is an amazing thing <laughs> to be true coming from the primary author on a paper that the Wall Street Journal is telling us says ivermectin doesn't work. Yep. Yep. No, it's it's um, it's it's kind of um, I, I don't know what to say. And, and, and it comes in these contradictions that we're hearing right? because the, 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 the Wall Street Journal quote. Uh, might say no effect whatsoever or no indication that uh, ivermectin works. The emails say other things. The paper itself yet seems to be have a split personality. We can go into that if you want. Well, I do think this is important. And I remember back from when the ivermectin arm result was announced seven or I guess it's closer to eight months now. Is that right? Um, when that was announced, the poll quote was no effect whatsoever, which right. even at the time it was clear wasn't true. There was an effect. The question is, was the effect large enough that we could be sure it wasn't statistical noise, but there was a positive effect. It wasn't no effect whatsoever. And here you have, you know, seven or eight months later, you have the principal investigator saying he believes they saw an effect, that yeah. the trial wasn't big enough to clarify it. So, how is it that journalists at the Wall Street Journal can't figure out that at, at worst, what we have here is a result that suggests ivermectin might work, but the trial wasn't large enough to spot it? 